Uh, hey guys, uh, this is going to be a review discussion, whatever, I don't know what you call it, I guess my opinions on a game I just beat, uh, and that is Sleeping Dogs for the 360, it's also on PS3 and I think PC, I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it's on PC. Um, this game, I remember it came out the day Darksiders 2 came out, and I really wanted to get that game because I loved the first Darksiders, and Darksiders 2 was slightly disappointing to me, uh, and Sleeping Dogs was a game I wanted to get, uh, but for whatever reason I didn't get it. I wish I'd picked it up that day because this game, this is a great game. Um, it's, it's an open world game, so it's similar to your Grand Theft Auto or Saints Row, uh, but the things this game does, like, it's a really, I guess, it's a really uh, forward-thinking game. There's so many things this game does that I just love. Um, I guess I'll start with the story. The story is pretty simple. It's it's pretty generic. It's the kind of thing you, you see a lot. Uh, you're basically an undercover cop who's lived in the States for a while, and then he moves to his hometown of Hong Kong, uh, which is where the game takes place. And you kind of have to, you know, infiltrate the triads. And, of course, you know, he becomes attached to some of the people he meets and, you know, the... The lines are blurred between whether he's a cop or if he's actually becoming a triad. Um, it, you know, it's it's pretty cliched stuff. Uh, but a lot of the twists the story takes you won't expect. I, I you know I think the characters are really well developed, uh, well written. You really care about what happens to the characters, and it's an entertaining storyline. Uh, it's it it takes a bit to pick up. The first few hours were kind of slow going, but towards the end it gets it gets really good, uh, and. I think part of the reason why the storyline is so good is that, you know, as the main character, Wei Shen, he's a he's a fantastic protagonist. Um, really a lot of depth to him. Um, so yeah, the story, you know, for an open world game, it's great, uh, which is good. And when you have an open world game and the story is not so great, uh, then you have, you know, you have to, it has to be a fun game to just mess around with. Um, so for those that loved Grand Theft Auto, or hated Grand Theft Auto 4, I should say, because it didn't really, you know, it wasn't a, a game that you can go around and mess around with, uh, this game's a little bit better in that regard. Um, I, I'll talk about, first off, the story missions. Um, they're extremely varied. There is not a weak mission in this game. Uh, whereas in Grand Theft Auto games, there's some missions in those games that I just hate. Uh, in this game, it, you know, it, they're all fun, very varied. Um, and it's one of the few games I've played where it feels like you're a cop. I mean, you you bug different types of uh, places uh, that you go to. Yeah, you know, you do surveillance. Uh, you got to be kind of stealthy and, uh, you know, infiltrate different areas. Uh, and and there, there's a bunch of mini games, too, that you can do. You know, you can use your phone to, like, hack different things and stuff like that. And I don't know, it's just you really feel like a cop when you're playing this game. A lot of the missions are fun like that. Because uh, the game's sp split up in, like, cop missions, then you have the triad missions, which those are your typical Grand Theft Auto fare. Uh, might be shooting down some guys in a car chase, uh, you know, some hand-to-hand -hand combat fights, uh, some shootouts, stuff like that. But because all the elements in this game work so well and are so fun, um, those missions are great. Uh, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, which... That's the one thing everyone really loves about this game, and I agree. The hand-to-hand -hand combat in this game is fantastic. It's reminiscent to, say, Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. Not quite to that level, but close enough. Uh, you know, you can attack anybody in your vicinity with at different angles. Uh, you know, combo-based fighting. You can, like, break people's limbs. You can counter uh, attacks, which you definitely want to do that. If you don't counter, the fights can be quite hard. Uh, you know, you can grapple enemies. It, it, like, the fighting feels good. When you punch guys and kick guys, it, it feels great in this game. So the hand-to-hand -hand combat is really fun. And it's actually, the majority of the game is hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, so that remains fun throughout the entire storyline. Uh, the gunplay itself, I've heard lots of people say it's not so great. I actually thought it was quite well done. Uh, it's got a pretty basic cover system. Uh, if you leap out of cover and hold L, you can do this slow motion thing where you can get a kill chain going in slow motion. Um, I did find the enemies, though, when you're in the shootout parts, have ridiculous aim. Like, they'll always shoot you. Uh, so you tend to get hit a lot in the shootouts, but, you know, they're fun. Uh, the slow motion thing helps a lot. You can, you know, disarm enemies, a bunch of different weapons. Uh, you know, really fun, and there's not that much of it, actually, which is odd. I think 
Like, the first shootout in the game doesn't come for quite a ways into it. Uh, but, yeah, that's fun. Uh, throughout the storyline, you'll be doing chases on foot uh, and in cars. The on-foot chases, they're okay. You know, you're running up different buildings, you're scaling buildings, jumping over fences, stuff like that. Uh, you don't actually tackle people. Like, I know L.A. Noir, the chases in that I thought were better because you could actually, you know, tackle people and they were a bit more involving. These ones, eh, they're pretty simple. Um, and maybe a bit on the boring side. Uh, what else is... Oh, I guess in the actual... In terms of the actual map, you can do a bunch of different mini-games. There's fighting arenas, a uh, bunch of collectibles to get. To get. Uh, there's cockfighting, a uh, bunch of gambling rings. Uh, you know, you can go around and buy different clothing, buy different cars. You know, all the usual stuff. Uh, well, except for the cockfighting. There's karaoke, which was pretty interesting. Um, I want to talk about the collectibles, because this game does something that I, I hope, if Grand Theft Auto V doesn't do this, I'm going to be very disappointed. Um, you know, by doing certain missions in the game, uh, actually taking out girls on dates, which that's actually one of the weaker parts of the game, I'll get to that in a second, uh, you can see where all the collectibles are on your giant map, and you can make waypoints to them. I love that. As someone who goes for all that stuff, you know, and tries to complete the game to the fullest, uh, that is a godsend. I loved how they showed the collectibles on the map. I mean, Grand Theft Auto 4, for, in for instance, like, there's those pigeons you had to shoot. There's no way to know where they are. I, I don't know how anyone finds all that stuff without any kind of map or anything, but how this game does collectibles is great. Uh, you can set waypoints to anything, which is, uh, you know, great. Uh, it's got, like, there's, like, these GPS kind of arrows uh, when you're following a certain waypoint when you're driving, which I, I love that. It's, it's very easy to find out exactly how you're going to get to the place you need to go and where it is. Uh, just great. There's taxis you can hire to bring you to any shop, I think, in the game. And that's all great. Um, now the dating. There's like five or six girls you can date in this. And from like you can date them like once or twice, I think, and that's it. You never see them for the rest of the game, uh, which I found was odd how they just, you know, they introduce these characters and then just get rid of them and you never see them again. Uh, you know, there's, like, you know, well-known voice actresses and actors for a lot of characters that don't really appear too often in this game. Uh, voice acting uh, is amazing. Uh, very, very well done, uh, which that helps the storyline out a lot. Uh, the music, I wasn't expecting to be so great. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big metal and uh, older rock kind of guy, and there's two stations that made me quite happy. Uh, two radio stations. Though the radio stations... Another flaw with this game, they're not quite as good as, say, in Grand Theft Auto 4, where you could select which songs you wanted to play, uh, which songs you didn't. At least, I th no, I think it was the Saints Row games that let you do that, which I loved. This game, you can't mess around with that at all. Uh, the radio systems are, uh, the radio stations are a bit glitchy. You can, like, be listening to one song on a radio station, accidentally switch it over to another station, and go back to that station you were on, and it'll be playing a different song. Uh, that kind of sucked. I, I was a bit lazy, I think, how they did the radio stations, but there are some great ones. Um, yeah, so yeah, the music's fantastic, voice acting's fantastic, sound effects are fantastic. Uh, the visuals, eh, they're not the greatest. I think Hong Kong looks fantastic. Uh, you know, it's a very vibrant setting. Uh, lots of, you know, NPCs running around. That's all great. Uh, the character models, though, in this game, I think are pretty, pretty ugly. I don't know about the PC version, but at least the 360 version. Not the prettiest looking game, but, I mean, the vis visuals, you know, who cares? You know, that's not really super important. But definitely, definitely not the greatest visuals around. Um, but yeah, Sleeping Dogs, just a really fun open world game. I was really impressed with the storyline. Uh, it takes you quite a while to get through it. There's a bunch of different side content you can do. Uh, you know, if you're going for all the collectibles and doing all the arena fights, uh, you know, you can, you know, there's a lot of hours of content here. Uh, you know, there's upgrade and upgrade system, uh, there's triad upgrades and cop upgrades, the more, you know, missions you do of those types. Uh, there's drug busts you can do, where you can kind of, like, watch surveillance camera and have, watch surveillance cameras and have, like, these big head guys arrested. Uh, the driving in Sleeping Dogs is also excellent. Uh, it's very arcadey, <laughs> uh, very arcadey actually, which is perfect. I I don't I really don't like when open world games will go for like simulation. Uh, obviously, Grand Theft Auto Four, you remember the tank, almost tank like controls of the cars in that game. This game, you're not gonna have that. Everything, all the cars drive very arcade like. 
uh, which helps because that makes the street races you can do quite a bit more enjoyable. Uh, you know, uh, another thing actually, when you're doing like cop chases, when you're trying to get away from cops in this game, uh, you can't actually last against cops that long in this game. Uh, you know, they will absolutely destroy you because they have guns and getting guns in this game is quite rare. It's actually, it's actually very hard to find guns um, other than when you're in missions. Uh, but if you're, you know, get, trying to get away from the cops, you can do like, like the race, the cop chases, well, I, I don't know if you call them chases, but, you know, getting away from the cops is a lot like the burnout games where you can press X at a direction and you can kind of bash them off the road and they can actually like flip, their cars can t entirely flip over. So you have, you have two cops coming after you, you can like do burnout style takedowns against them and then you'll lose the cops, which is great. This is the most enjoyable uh, way of getting rid of cops I've seen in a video game. I hope other games take note of this and, you know, make getting away from the cops a much more pleasant experience. Like, any time I was, you know, accidentally hijacked someone and a cop came after me, I was excited because I get to do the, the burnout-style takedowns. So, yeah, the racing, you know, how the cars handle, all, all great in this game as well. And, uh, and even, like, the mini-games, like, there's lock-picking mini-games that are actually quite fun. Uh, you know everything that game, everything this game does, I think is 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 great. Uh, you know it doesn't do anything too original, but you know it's it's definitely I think it's the highest point we've seen for open world games uh, in terms of accessibility and just plain fun. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you have any interest in open world games, uh, definitely give Sleeping Dogs a try and look for it. I got it for twenty dollars. It's I don't know if it's around that cheap now, but I think it should be twenty thirty dollars. Uh, especially if you love the Hong Kong setting, which that was one of the big draws to me, because uh, we we haven't really seen many games that take place in Hong Kong, and they you know it's a great depiction of it. Uh, but yeah, that's Sleeping Dogs, uh, fantastic game really. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.